deploy your SageMaker model using SageMaker Jumpstart. An easy way to do that is to, um, if you already have SageMaker up and running in SageMaker Studio, uh, you open the studio here and then uh, select one of the many models that are there for you. Uh, SageMaker uh, will also have other tools by the time you see this recording. You may have access to uh, beta tools like uh, Bedrock and others, but uh, for today what we're just going to do is click on Llama 270B Chat or any of the others and ensure you can deploy a model of this size. That means you're going to need an instance that can handle a model of that size. And the deployment configuration for this model means that you're going to need an ML G5 48X large or more. So you have to have that provisioned in your account. Many tutorials out there on how to have that provisioned in your own account. You can see here I can customize the endpoint name. I'm going to leave it as default. And then uh, that way when I go back and reference it in other places, it, you know, and then, and then uh, the default model uh, artifact, you can put it into a bucket. You can create your own bucket for this particular thing. But for this, I'm just going to leave it as the default bucket. That way I know that uh, my model is going into US East 1, this bucket name. Now I can go ahead, if this model allows training, I can train a model. This, unfortunately, this model does not. Um, and in this particular case, what I'm trying to do, I don't need to do that at all. And then I can also run the model on a notebook just to see what it, it looks like. I'm not going to do that as well because here we're, we're really interested in is deploying this somewhere else. And you can see the content length here um, and the token length. And uh, you need to have accepted the end user license agreement for Llama 2 specifically and uh, go back and reference Meta's pages for what that is. You can see the evaluation results, reading comprehension, math, code for Llama 1, Llama 2 significantly better, code Llama even better, as it's been trained on a lot of uh, code, including Python. But for what we're gonna build, we're building a chat app that can function in Vision Pro. So the, the chat app only needs essentially to, to uh, take advantage of being able to chat back and forth. It's not going to write code, etc. Some future version, maybe. So we've go ahead and clicked on deploy. We already clicked on it. When you click on deploy, you'll see that uh, the endpoint's been created, my ARN, etc. cetera. Um, I black, uh, black that out, but it doesn't really, it's not really that useful to anyone unless you have my role. Um, so maybe not. So anyhow, uh, once this is done deploying, I started deploying uh, maybe about six or seven minutes ago. So it, it might not be done for a few minutes. We'll come back and, and get to the next step, which is essentially to create Swift uh, code that will allow me to invoke this endpoint. Catch you later. So now that it's deployed, I can go and uh, I can utilize that model. As a matter of fact, let me back up a step so you can all see what I've just done here. Utilize that model in in uh, the studio. So we're going to try try the studio first, and we're going to go up to our own environment uh, after the studio. So I'm going to open a notebook, and you can see here it it asks me what kind of image I'd like to use in my notebook. There's all these other images. Data, data science two or three point oh is uh, good enough for what we're going to do. You can leave it at data science two. I'm just going to try data science three, see what happens. And then kernel is uh, Python 3. You can see these, there are no other options uh, anymore. And then instance type here, whatever I want, because the model's deployed on that mega beefy instance, this is just going to uh, uh, reference that and invoke that endpoint. So click on select there. And you can see here, this, this is fully uh, functioned for me. So I'm just going to run the first and uh, first few. So you can read the info here just about 
you know, max tokens and, and those kinds of things, and I'll read you that. And this is the kind of default that kind of comes along with all of our LLM models. You can see here, you know, just kind of uh, uh, the types of roles. You have a user, and an example of what the user might say. Then the assistant, what the assistant might say, and what the system might say. So you see here three roles, user, system, and assistant. So just run that. And now to query the endpoint, you can see here, um, they again, they reiterate the EULA. And I'm using SageMaker runtime here based on this particular model. So these are the kinds of things that we're going to need later on when we run this uh, in Swift. So the application, I've accepted the EULA. Here's the payload. And I'm expecting this kind of body uh, in return. This is the definition of this function. And then, you know, for the dialogue and the messages, I'm going to generate some content. It's going to be two seconds before the results to show up. Here it is. User, what is the recipe for mayonnaise? Mayonnaise is a thick, creamy condiment, blah, 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 egg yolk, vinegar, and onion, et cetera. Um, it gives you a great definition of what mayonnaise is. Great, and I could do this over and over again based on the, uh, you know, and then going to Paris, what should I see? An assistant, blah, 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 and I should see this, 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 and this uh, in Paris. And this, this role, Answer with haiku, I'm going to Paris, what should I see? Eiffel Tower High, art in the Louvre Museum, um, and the River Pirus. And uh, this one, answer with emojis, which is very interesting and funny. Uh, but you can see here, based on the um, roles that I gave them, you can see it, you know, it's, it's capable of just switching and answering, etc. So from here we can go off and use uh, uh, you know Langchain and others to create agents off of Llama 2. But what we're gonna do is take this over into Swift and try to run this in Swift. So we'll see you on the next one. Locally, the next step is to kind of work out uh, all the other features that are available in Langchain and others like uh, you know, agents, conversational agents, memory buffers, uh, functions, etc. cetera. So um, we've, previous to this step, as I said, we've gone through and deployed a jumpstart model. We've uh, uh, created some queries that gave us some results of various types, and that's using the invoke method now we want to go back and um, just create a SageMaker uh, endpoint using LaneChain. So you can see here, first thing is I've imported SageMaker endpoint and LLM context handler, SageMaker endpoint, etc. Prompt template, we're going to go and use the conversational chain with memory buffer shortly, but, um, and then the dictionary. And I'm saying, and this is straight out of LangChain's documentation with a minor change uh, for the Llama type of content. So I'm using a uh, content handler. In the content handler, I'm saying, here's, here's my role, the role of system, I'm a robot, etc. And as I, as, as I change my agent, I'm going to have to change these roles here and transform input. An output I'm leaving the same except that I'm saying uh, generation context. I think in LangChain, and let me look this up because I don't recall, but I think in LangChain um, it uses something similar but not exact. As a matter of fact, here it is. I'll bring it into the screen so you can see. Um, you can see here that they're expecting the string to be JSON encoded. 
uh, UTF-8, and then generated text. Now the difference here and here is that uh, still JSON dumps, but is expecting this kinds of format, this role, this content, this role, this content, etc. And uh, and so this is my I'm a kind robot, great. And then this is the prompt that I'm saying here in my question. And in this particular question, it's uh, uh, who, how long was Elizabeth hospitalized? Well, it, it, you'll see in a second that I'm using a document that I'm loading to answer this question. More importantly, down here, the SageMaker endpoint. A little bit different than um, what we showed previously. I'm declaring this amount of max tokens, um, which I think there's you know more tokens possible in the actual llama model and the temperature. I'm telling it not to be creative at all. And here, this is straight out of Langchain's uh, uh, documentation of an example. I'm loading a document from the doc store or wherever it might be, and then I'm going to answer the question based on the document that I have here. So, and the question is, Elizabeth collapsed and she was diagnosed with brain injury, blah, 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 stayed with the hospital, Skeeter stayed with her in the hospital for three days. So basically I want to summarize and answer this. So I, I load this question and answer chain from Langchain with the prompt question and Langchain says, sure, I'll be happy to answer that. Elizabeth was hospitalized for three days. Great, I mean, all of this text now, and now I can ask the, answer, ask the question against it excellent so what I would do some, something like that is all of my documents that I have in various folders I'd want to be able to create a vector store and um, you know look over those documents and, and question and answer those docs next part and this is probably where we'll leave this particular video because it's getting quite long but uh, the next part is is now I'm going to try other types of chains so here is a conversational chain, which is something I, I use quite a bit, um, that uh, you know stores uh, memory in a memory buffer, other ways of storing memory. Check out Langchain's documentation on that. And then also you can just use a, a file if you'd like. And I'm just saying, hi there, great. I just wanna see what it comes back with. This is a friendly conversation between the human and the AI. The AI is talkative, provides a lot of specific information. I say, hi there, Oop. Um, and the AI says hi there back. I'm happy to chat with you about anything you like, blah, blah, blah. Is there anything specific you'd like to talk about? And ask me, I'm here to provide information to the best of my ability. Um, I could have made this into anything else, like a sarcastic robo uh, robot or something like that. So the next thing I ask it, and obviously we want to move this into some kind of chat bot or enter into a chat bot um, based in code, I want to go to Egypt. How can I travel from the United States to Egypt? And so again, we enter um, the conversational chain, and uh, you know it, it. You know it. It now has my history. How can I uh, travel to Egypt after I said hello? As you can see here, the entirety of the conversation. And then uh, you know, as the conversation gets longer, we might want to summarize this conversation. But right now, it doesn't really matter. And I'd say, sure, I'd be happy to help. There's several ways to travel from the United States to Egypt, depending on blah, 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 um, you know, how you want to get there. Uh, and I'm not checking whether this answer is correct or if it's loosening, but I might do that. Uh, it takes a flight, takes around 10 to 12 hours, which is pretty good. Um, Egypt Air, Delta, you can book flights um, and travel, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can have it go off and actually book a flight for me if, if um, this, is, this is the route that I want to take or if I want to back up and do something else. And then this is a more important question uh, just to show that the memory buffer is still working. Conversation predicts what is the weather like there this month? So I didn't say we're in Egypt. Um, we're going to go back through. It's going to load the previous conversation and all the results of the conversation. And uh, um, then it says, sure, I can help you with that. Um, the weather in Egypt in March, March, as you can see here, 
and it's not March. It's uh, uh, recording this video in September. But you can see here, it says the weather in March can be blah, 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 depending on Cairo, blah, blah, blah. The temperature can be can drop significantly, 56 degrees. I don't know how true this is. I am actually going to Egypt. Tune in to learn more about robots, Python, spatial computing, and generative AI. Like, share, and subscribe.